One thing that stands out about the Native American culture is their love for land. Only if land is good, we are good. Only if the soil is good, we are good. A few places that we pass through have been of great intrigue and significance as to what their capabilities were in terms of doing things beyond the body. There was an ocean here, yeah, an inland ocean which dried up. Which direction are we going? We're going up this mountain? Yeah, this way. And then turning back? We'll, we'll start cutting back. Okay. Here we are in Montana. We are climbing what is called as the Bear Tooth uh, Pass. These squirrels are climbing up my legs, thinking I'm a tree trunk. Maybe I've been here for too long. I think we are uh, maybe at least three days behind schedule because one day I had to go to Los Angeles for a meeting with Jack uh, Dragon Maw, who uh, has done phenomenal work uh, as an environmental scientist. Uh, he is open-heartedly uh, wanting to be a part of uh, Kaveri Calling and the Conscious Planet Movement and willing to support us in every possible way which is uh, tremendous support. We are entering uh, Yellowstone National Park, the very famous Yellowstone National Park we've just entered. And uh, both sides have evergreen trees and fabulous mountains. Who can match a sculptor like this? A million year project. Look at the result, too fantastic. Wow. Here we are at the Yellowstone National Park, 3,400 square miles of land, pristine, largely kept this way except for the roads. Over thousand rivers and streams originate here, many of them joining up with Missouri as tributaries. Snake River, which flows west, is going straight up to Pacific, going all over the place like a snake. 
uh, twisting and turning through the terrain. Yellowstone National Park, a must-see for anybody who loves nature. It's one thing about um, living here is our kids spend a lot of time in nature. Yeah, that's, that's great. And nothing like that, I'm telling you. the best you. education. Long right? term, that works better than anything else. Anything, exactly. My girl also spent so much time with me in the mountains, in the forest. Wonderful. And she is like, you know, she's at home just anywhere now. She's exactly. grown up and she's doing well. Okay. Uh, but you know, there is a certain poise and grace to her. Okay. She's at ease anywhere, she doesn't need much. That's the greatest gift, uh, right? If you ask her, you want anything, she says, no, I got everything, she'll nice. say. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's, that's wonderful. So, that's I think that is mainly because of her exposure to nature and being with lots of people, all sorts of people. When she was growing up, yeah. she stayed in the best homes in the world. Right. And she stayed in tribal homes, in yeah. villages, in huts, you know. That's your words of, um, expo I think, about exposure and experience? Yeah. They've died in Rebecca and I. <laughs>
which is uh, about five and a half hour ride, I think. So we would like to get there uh, before sundown or little after sundown. And uh, tomorrow morning is uh, Darshan. All right. So everybody be there for the Darshan. Ride with me. Here we are at uh, Bear Lake, Utah, a little over 6.30, sun is yet to come up, no sign of him. <laughs> Temperatures are somewhere around six to seven degrees centigrade. Mm. Fires all around me. Uh, one thing that stands out about the Native American culture is their love for land. It is even inappropriate to say love for land because it is not that they love the land, they are the land. <laughs> even uh, you and me are land, but most people don't get it till you bury them that we are land. But this dimension of their spirituality, is very relevant for today and tomorrow, for this generation and the next, that people live understanding, knowing, being conscious that we are just land. Only if land is good, we are good. Only if the soil is good, we are good. So, I'm saying this because I'm getting a lot of questions, People asking, Sadhguru, how do you find Native American mysticism different from the Indian mysticism? Well, culturally we may be different, but when it comes to mysticism, there is no such thing as Indian mysticism, African mysticism, American mysticism, there is no such thing because mysticism is just exploration of the reality of existence, which is right now beyond physicality, because of which your senses are not able to perceive. So mysticism is not looking at exploring physical spaces, it is about exploring dimensions beyond the physical nature. That means fundamentally, using some method, doesn't matter what, some method to transcend the limitations of sense perception so that we can touch and experience dimensions beyond the physical. So Native American mysticism is of a certain sort. We will... Uh, bring many aspects of their pursuits and their experiences. We will uh, take you through this to whatever extent uh, been, we're not been able to process many things because we, <laughs> we are riding from place to place and uh, not been able to deliver the goods to you in terms of the exciting things that we see and experience. Uh, we'll do this as we go by, be with me, ride with me. Uh, today 
we decided not to ride because the Bear Lake and there's work to do, recording and stuff. Mm. From here on, it's a real exploration depending on what kind of meetings we make. The camera people, your sitting work is over? Yes. So everybody just uh, block the right nostril and go on the left nostril. In the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been through different Native American nations. A few places that we passed through in the last two weeks have been of great intrigue and significance as to what their capabilities were in terms of doing things beyond the body. When you do something beyond your physical existence, in a way, that is what is spiritual. There was human sacrifice in prevalence in that society. What is a sacrifice? Let's understand this. There are only three ways to sacrifice. One thing is to cut your own throat or somebody else's throat and sacrifice the life itself which is what these people did. Another way is to sacrifice parts of your body in terms of flesh, which was very, very prevalent in the Native American culture, that parts of one's flesh is offered as sacrifice. And uh, just now we were in the Lakota nation, we went to the site where uh, General George Armstrong Custer fell in the battlefield where he was killed. The sitting bull who was the chief of Lakota did not go into the battle. One thing is he sacrificed twenty-four pieces of flesh from his arms. And uh, his mother, who was a wise woman, said after so much sacrifice, and considering your age, you do not go to the battle. Let the young people fight, you take care of the people who are here, you take care of the tribe, let the young men fight. Well, that advice paid off very well for them, for the Lakota nation. So sacrifice of flesh has been in practice, because if there is no sacrifice, you must understand the word sacrifice in the right context, it's not about destroying something, it's not about killing something, it is about infusing some energy into another dimension which needs that right now. But a more sophisticated way of sacrifice is that you are able to throw out a burst of your energy as a sacrifice. In a way, all initiations, consecrations are a kind of a sacrifice. This is an energy sacrifice, throwing it out. Here we are riding towards Salt Lake City through a, a narrow ravine. As you see, uh, terrain getting more desert-like and from now on <laughs> we'll battle heat probably as we go south, not cold. Here we are in uh, Salt Lake City in Utah. The Utah laws are such that only if you're below twenty-one years of age, you need a helmet. If you're over twenty-one years of age, you don't need a helmet. Over twenty-one for sure, all right? So here, you can see me riding without a helmet, perfectly legal, okay? This is an adult country.
But madam, am I free? Or you have something? There's always something. <laughs> Hello. Sadhguru. Hello, how are you? Welcome. See, everybody in different cultures have found their own ways of connecting to the deeper dimensions of life. The question is about how they do it. So if it is possible for you to describe something that you think is significant as to how it is done in this church, because Mormons started in America, that's why I would like to know. We make covenants with, with our Heavenly Father. We do that through baptism, where we take on the name of Jesus Christ. And then um, when we get married, when we choose an eternal mate or a mate that we want to be with forever, we get married in the temple. What, what is there in the temple? Is it like the image of Jesus or, or is it something else or some symbolism? Um, it's so sacred that we don't talk about it. Okay, that's right. And we don't worship Christ on the cross because we, we worship a living Christ rather than the crucified Christ. We believe he's still alive, he's been resurrected, he's, he still guides his church today. That's the one that's the sacred building. What else would you say? Uh, we do not have ritual prayers very much. We, don't, we have individual prayers, we individually, but we would petition God, we would thank him for our blessings. We would seek guidance from him. We would seek specific blessings for ourselves and for others. You're going to know more about this church than most members. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, if you That's understand. the idea. <laughs> Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much. Safe travels. Thank you. If all of you just stand here, don't come too close. Stand here, leave space. They'll take a picture. Face that way. Children in the front. Thank you, Sadhguru, for stopping by. Get new trousers, What a place, huh? Mm. Unbelievable. Oh. If it was India, they would have said these are five Panchapandavas <laughs> sitting there. <laughs> what, uh, camera people? You want to go to the arches right now or we do it tomorrow morning? Tomorrow morning for sure. I will just ride to the top and come, whoever wants to can come. 
photography is not a must if you want to, you can, otherwise we'll do it tomorrow anyway. Most amazing uh, rock formations, unbelievable stuff. Wow, I don't know if cameras can ever do justice to these rocks. They are too incredible and too many. And they tell me beneath this there could be thousand feet or depth of thousand feet of salt. Can you believe that? Unbelievable that uh, there was an ocean here, yeah, an inland ocean which dried up and this whole belt is a salt belt. And I came here yesterday <laughs> and even now it gives me goosebumps. Still, uh, yet to sit down somewhere, if there is some shade out here with eyes closed and figure out what is it that it's doing to my body. <laughs> They're like living things, these rocks. They're very much alive in so many ways, I don't know. It's just impossible to find a logical expression to what they are. <laughs> what is he? Looking at. Hello, man. Hello. Hello. What are you? I like huh? your goggles. What are you? Right now, he's right here, man. <laughs> I like your goggles. Really? What about me? <laughs> huh? You like, like me? The <laughs> <camera>. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the balancing rock right now. Hmm. 
at the loose rocks upon which it's sitting on the way the arrangement happened, huh? Confounded, rocks and more rocks, not just lying there, but have risen to impossible geometry of symphony, staring down at you like living things that they are. What insane heart and industrious hand could put them all up in these magnificent forms that human eye finds hard to comprehend? All one can do is stare confounded, confounded by this craft of creation.